on this open phone. It's okay. This open phone. If you see uh, Sohail with the camera, there's a. I have a class assignment too. I'm taking the class online, and uh, one of the professors he wants us to record a video, so that's why uh, he's doing that. And um, anyways, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. This open phone. So my topic actually is not about toenails. <laughs> Until it's going to be about um, respect in, uh, respecting parents. And I, I think this is a very, very important topic. Alhamdulillah, my parents are alive. And uh, inshallah, I hope that all of your parents are alive and doing well as well. And this, this is such an important topic for us. And I just want two things, inshallah, from you guys. So before we actually begin. One is I really like people who take notes. And one of the times I was in, um, in actually in Taif, I went there for Umrah, and then they took us to Thai for a uh, fun. And I didn't have any of my notebooks or anything with it. It was supposed to be just fun. So one of these scholars came and visited us at this place where we were, we were staying. And I still remember I had a, my wallet, and I took that out. And I was scrambling to find any piece of paper to write every single detail down. And it was one of the most amazing lectures I've ever heard. So just my advice to you is try to have some pieces of paper, something with you all the time so that you can take some notes and inshallah benefit from it later. And the second thing is, I want you guys to participate. Okay? So that's why I have this a beach ball. This is my little thing and most of you guys are my students. Are, some of you guys are my students here. Uh, and I love using the beach ball. And so inshallah, I, I'm going to have some discussions and we have different things. So I'd like you to be participating and not just staring at me. Some communities I go to, they'll just be staring at me like, you know, when is this guy going to finish? But I want you guys to interact with me, okay? And inshallah it will benefit me and you as well. What I wanted to start with was, there's a video not too, uh, too long, ago, long ago, it was called Facebook Parenting for the Troubled Teen. How many of you guys have watched that? Facebook? Okay, what is that? Sister, what was it about? Really quickly. It was about this teenager that she Okay, so she was complaining about all these chores that she has to do, and she was posting it on Facebook, and she thought her fit parents, like some of us, we think our parents, are they're, they're just too dumb, they'll never figure it out. I'll just block them, and they'll never see this, they can't figure it out. Well, her dad was an IT professional, okay? <laughs> so he hacked into her account somehow. He seized the whole thing, and when she was gone at school, he got her laptop, he went in his backyard, and he had a 45 Magnum, okay? One of the strongest guns, at least handguns that there are. And so what he did is he, he actually made a video and he went point by point, whatever she had mentioned, all the different chores and all the different things and, uh, that she was swearing at her parents, cursing them out and stuff like that. He went point by point and then he shot the laptop. And then he posted that video on her Facebook page. Okay? <laughs> so anyways, this caught on. It became really popular. Now I, I just checked. It was 35 million views. Okay, and they were invited to all these different talk shows, all these different places. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith by Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, it's mentioned that he said that the, one of the worst of sins, or it is of the greatest sins, that a man should curse his parents. And the Sahaba who were sitting there, they were amazed. They were really surprised. They said, how can someone curse their parents? Right? And we can all testify to that. We... Our, our friends, maybe, and hopefully not us, inshallah, but we cuss out our parents all the time, right? And so the Sahaba were really shocked about this. And then they said, uh, the Prophet sallallahu says that he swears or cusses out someone else's parents, and then thereby he retaliates or takes revenge by cussing out his parents. And they said, oh, okay, that's one of the greatest sins. And we see that we, nowadays, when we're talking to friends, okay, in high school and sometimes in their face. They don't care. They'll, they'll swear at them in their face. Not only behind their backs, but now it's coming to the point where they'll say that to their face. Rather than calling them by proper names, they, they disrespect them. What I want to do now is give you a small survey. Okay? So I want you to think about these numbers in your head. Okay? So I'm going to ask a question and you have a scale from 1 to 5. 1 being really low, 5 being the highest. So, the first question, how is your relationship with your parents? You don't have to say it, I'm a one, okay? Just think about this. So one to five, think about this. 
The second question. Do you and your parents have a healthy communication? Or you have healthy communication? Again, one to five. Number three. Do you think your parents trust you? Okay. And number four. Do you respect your parents on a level one to five? Now you can add that up, inshallah, and everyone hopefully is up in the, you know, 16, 21 or something like that, right? A very high number. But we can judge for ourselves, at least somewhat, how our relationship is with our parents. And this is something that we should reflect on, because it should concern us quite a bit. As some of the scholars of the past, they said, that there's two sins that a person will get the punishment in this life. One is one who does bad to his parents or disrespects his parents. And the second one is a zani, a person who commits fornication. They will see the sin or they will see their punishment in this life and in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that there are certain people that he will not look at on the day of judgment. And one of them being the one who disrespects and dishonors his parents. There was a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was about to pass away, he couldn't say the shahada. He couldn't say the shahada. And one of his friends, he came running to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask him, you know, can you please come to him and say, have him say the shahada, have him say, uh, say the kalima before he dies. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him something. He says, does he pray? And that tells us a whole different topic, but the importance of prayer. That the Prophet ﷺ asked him basically whether, whether or not he is considered a Muslim or not. So he says, does he pray? And he says, yes, he prays. And so the Prophet ﷺ gets up, goes to that person, and he tries to make him say the shahada, but he couldn't say it. He was trying to say it, but he couldn't say it. And so the Prophet ﷺ, maybe it was revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but he called the Sahabi's mother. And she comes, and she was very, very upset at her son. And she wasn't going, she was, to the point where she wasn't going to forgive him. And the Prophet ﷺ asked, he said, if, they, if we bring firewood and we were to burn him alive in a raging fire, would you then forgive him? And she says, yes, I would, I would forgive him if, if you're going to do that. And she sa he says that take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and me as a witness and forgive your son right now. And she did that. And right as soon as she did that, the Prophet ﷺ went to the Sahabi, had him say kalima, and he died with the shahada, with iman in his heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra, He says in ayah number 23, Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, right, commands us, Allah ta'budu. That you worship Him, illa iya, and no one, one but Him. Wa bil walidin ihsan, and then he compares it and he adds it to something. He says, and those who do excellence or do good to their parents. So in this verse, he's he's comparing to, or he's saying two things, really important. One is the importance of la ilaha illallah tawheed, and then following that up with the respect a person should show to their parents. And this teaches us something. That if our relationship with our parents isn't good, we better check our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, he says, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues where he says, So if one of your parents or both of your parents reach an old age, do not even say uff to them. Don't even say uff. Now, uff, we don't say uff. When our parents, when we get upset, how many of you guys use uff? Wow, okay, some people actually use uff. Okay, but what do we usually use? What do we say? <clears throat> what else? What are some other things? What do the sisters do? They roll their eyes, right? Okay, what are some things we, we actually, and then sometimes we even talk back to them. So what I want you to do now is, I want you to tell me what makes you say uff. What are some of the things that you do, or I'm sorry, that your parents do, that make you say uff? I mean, 
What are some other things? What do the sisters do? They roll their eyes, right? Okay? What are some things? We, we actually, and then sometimes we even talk back to them. So what I want you to do now is, I want you to tell me what makes you say, Oof. What are some of the things that you do, or I'm sorry, that your parents do, that make you say, Oof. That means, makes you, you get annoyed, or something like that. Okay, something happens to you, and they, they just, like one of the things I'll tell you, I'll start, I guess. My, my dad, uh, alhamdulillah, I, I actually live with them, and so uh, alhamdulillah, I'm able to, inshallah, try to serve them at least a little bit. And so my dad, one of the things that, uh, that annoys me, is that on really hot summer days, when it's really hot outside, he'll go, go outside and mow the lawn. Okay? Like, I could have done it in the morning, but no, no, at over time, when it's like 105, or maybe it doesn't get hot, that hot here. But uh, it's extremely hot outside and humid, is I go mow the lawn. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> right? So what are some of the things, if you get the ball, you need to tell me. Go ahead. Well, I don't say, uh, 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 but it gets me really annoyed. Um, when uh, I have to go do some homework, mm -hmm. but I can do it later. And I, and I really want to do other stuff. I have to go do my homework. So like right now. It's right. like to them, it's like this is the end of the world. Yeah. You have like two minutes to live. You need to do this now. Okay. How about the sisters if you could throw it back there? Okay. Good. Okay, sister, whoever. Yes. Go ahead. Um, when you're not in a good mood and they what? Okay, and they might make you say, or have you do something and then it annoys you. Okay, what are some other things? Come on. Those brothers, I don't know you brothers. Yes, what's your name? Abdullah. Abdullah. What do your parents do that sometimes annoys you? When they tell me something like more than once. Okay, they tell you more than once. And you're like, I heard it. Okay, I got it. I'm about to do it. And they, they keep mentioning it. Okay, sisters in the back, anyone? Remember I said I need discussion. Right, I have an whole hour. I'm not going to talk for an hour. So you guys need to discuss. They're all like pointing at each other. Okay. Yeah, sister, go ahead. Okay, they accuse you of something, right? It gets pretty serious when they accuse you of something and they take it from the point that you've done it already. Even though they didn't really know the details of what happened or something, they just they, they come and start shouting at you or other things like that. Anyways, I guess you don't want to participate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the ayah where he says, And do not shout at them, but rather say words of kareem, like respect, okay? Respectful words and nice words to them. And this is something extremely important. When we're young, we do really, really annoying things, okay? We do extremely annoying things. And our parents show a lot of patience with us. And when we get older and stronger, our parents are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And sometimes they reach that age, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all health inshaAllah. And not let them go through this. But some of them get to the age where they're almost like children again. And at this age when they say things that might be annoying to you, rather than talking back to them, okay, rather than shouting at them and getting impatient, we need to show a little bit of patience and talk to them in a kind manner. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الْبُنِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower the wings of mercy basically, right? When we're getting older, okay, when you're getting stronger, if you're built, how do you walk? Someone show me, anyone built here? Uh, nobody's going to say it, but okay. So, yes, how do you walk? I'd say the confident. Okay, very confident, sometimes arrogant, right? You see it like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Or, you know, these, you know, these way back in the day, right? At least for me. But, so these guys, they're huge built machines, the way they walk, right? They have stiff necks. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this verse that when they reach an old age, lower your neck, basically don't have a, stick, a stiff neck, don't bow down to them, but don't be confident and, or too arrogant with them. Okay, actually lower your neck a little bit with them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ رَبِّرْ حَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِ Right? And make 
and, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bestow on them your mercy as they did when I was younger. When I was younger and they were bringing me up, we bestow mercy on them as well. And so this teaches us something really important, that we should also make dua for our parents. Okay? Especially when they're reaching old age, just like they, they would make dua for us when we were younger. Now, what are some ways that they sacrifice for us? What are some things that they do? Think back now, or maybe think about now. What are some things that our parents do that are like they require a lot of sacrifice? Yes. Okay, so they're tired and they have to bring you to this youth day, right? They go, oh, the day off, the day we get to relax. Oh, I have to go to this, right? I have to go to this event. And so they're driving you all the way here. Yes. Um, especially when you're like really young, if they're sick, they do things to you to make sure you don't get sick. Okay, so when you're really young, if they're sick, they, they take extra precautions so you don't get <coughs> sick. What else? Yes. Okay, sometimes they actually move, make hijra almost, right? They make a type of hijra just to, for you to get a better education. What are some other things they do? Yes? Working. Working, right? Sometimes two, three different jobs just to support you guys. What else? Yes? Making dinner for you and stuff. Making dinner when they're tired, right? I, Alhamdulillah, I have four kids. Okay, one after another. And it's really tough. All right, now they're a little bit older, so it's, we're kind of relaxed, alhamdulillah. But when they were growing up and they were so young, okay, all these different, you know, they're all shouting, running around, doing all things. And then I see my wife, like she's staying up all night, you know, taking care of the kids. And then during the daytime, she's cooking and cleaning and doing all sorts of different things around the household. Yes, sisters in the back. Someone has their hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Say that again, please. Okay, so they put up with their, our attitudes, okay, when we're like so selfish at times, we don't, we're not doing what we're supposed to do and they put up with it. What are some other things? Brothers against the wall, okay, hands it up, go ahead. What are some other sacrifices? Anyone else? What are some other sacrifices? Just the time and energy to you in general. The time and energy in general, okay? All the sacrifice. What about when you're, and we'll talk about it actually, it's going to come up soon, um, in the Surah, in Surah Luqman, ayah number uh, 13 and 14, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, labor and, you know, and pregnancy and all those things. Yes? They buy stuff for you. They buy things for you, right? How many of you guys, well, don't have to raise your hand, but how many times do they buy us a gift for anything, right? They give us money, they take us places, they take us on vacations. Right? We get more in America especially than most kids in the entire world. And even then sometimes we act disrespectful for them to them. Yes. Okay. Staying up all night taking care of the young babies, crying, maybe they have a stomach stomach pains, maybe they're sick, something like that, and they're taking care of them the entire night. Doesn't seem like your parents sacrifice much for you. Some of you are just kind of sitting there and like stringing kids, trying to figure out. Yes? Yes. Gas? What is that? Okay, when they take you around, they're filling up gas for you, okay? All the money they spend, I remember, this was like way back in the 90s when I read this, but it said on average, each child growing up in America, the parents spend $86,000, okay? This was back in the 90s, I, don't, I didn't look this up now. But uh, I, I remember the statistic from back then, that in the 90s they would take an average from basically when the child's born up till 18, $86,000 or more for just one child to be raised. Okay? So that, and that's one child. And that's an average, and there's, I'm sure, inshallah, that our parents are even spending more than that on us. So imagine now with the prices and everything going up so much, how much they spend now for us. And the college and all these different tuitions that they pay for us. Yes? Okay, so I just mentioned that, right? And then in another verse in Surah Yusuf, ayah number 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about what Yusuf alayhi salam says to his father. He says, So imagine now with the prices and everything going up so much, how much they spend now for us. And the college and all these different tuitions that they pay for us. Yes? 
Okay, so I just mentioned that, right? And then in another verse in Surah Yusuf, ayah number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about what Yusuf alayhi salam says to his father. He says, إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِي He says something, he says that to his father, يَا أَبَتِي So just, where's my candy? Oh, bring it up. So this is such an easy question that if you don't get this, I should really, really hit you hard with this candy. Okay? So, um, who was Yusuf alayhi salam's father? Yes? Go ahead. Yeah. Ya'qub alayhi salam. Okay? So Ya'qub alayhi salam and Yusuf alayhi salam says to his father, Ya Abati. He could have said, What are some other ways you can say to your, like in Arabic, you can call your father? Yes? Baba. Baba. What else? Abi. Abi. Any others? Abu. Abu. In Urdu, Abu. Some people say Abuji, right? Or like uh, some ba ba uh, Baji. Abaji, there's all these different types of words that we use. And if you go to every language, I'm sure there's different types of ways that you can call your parents. One of the most respectful ways to call your parents or your dad, especially in Arabic, is saying, Ya Abati, Oh my dear father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uses this in this verse and, and mentions this. And he says, Inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban wa kawkaban wa shamsa wa al-qamar ra'aytuhum li sajideen. So he tells him about the dream he saw. That I saw 11 stars and I saw the sun and the moon and I saw them doing such that to me. Okay? What is another benefit we can learn from this verse? What is Yusuf alayhi salam sharing with his father? A dream. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you something. Okay, so that's pretty obvious, but uh, so hey, throw it to them. Okay, so Yusuf alayhi salam tells him about, and he just nailed some sister with that. Okay, sorry about that. So hey, don't do that again. He's my son, anyways. But okay, so um, so Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions mentions this. Okay, that he's communicating with his father. He's telling him about a dream that he had. When's the last time you told your parents about a dream? Think about that. When's the last time something was bothering you and you told your parents about it? Instead of your friends and went to your parents first rather than your brothers or sisters or your, uh, your friends around you. And so there's so many different things we can derive from this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Luqman, He says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِسْكُلْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكِ وَإِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about when Luqman alayhi salam was giving some wasiyah or some advice to his son. And one of the advices was to be good to his parents or to be good to your parents and especially to your mother. And it mentions here, his mother bore him in weakness and hardship and another weakness and hardship, and his weaning is in two years. So what's the first weakness and hardship that she has to go through? Yes? Holding the baby. Holding the baby. For nine months, she carries you. Okay, and if you're twins, that's double trouble, right? That's a lot more work. How many of you guys have, uh, how many of you guys are in high school? Most of you guys, okay. How many of you guys had a class, and they did this back in the day when I went to high school, right? But how many of you guys, I have a class where they, uh, they have someone carry a baby for, uh, I think it's like a, a month or something like that. How many of you guys have ever seen that? Okay, you've seen that before? Yeah. Okay, is it extremely, have you done it? Has anyone here done that before? Where you had to like, they have like a backpack type of thing? I don't know how exactly it looks. It's flower and eggs, okay? And what do you do? You nurse it like a real baby and you have to carry it for how long? About a month or so. About a month or so. So imagine nine months. Multiply that by nine. Imagine how annoying that is. And so they make us do that to try to reflect a little bit, but we don't really think about these things. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the first hardship is this time for nine months. Then what's the next hardship? The birth, the, the, birth, the labor itself. Extremely difficult. When the man is so close to death, okay, it's so easy for them to die at this time. And so this is the second. And then, 
وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ What does that mean? They feed the baby for how many years? Two years. Okay? For two whole years, they keep the baby to their side and keep feeding them whenever they get hungry. Because that baby doesn't eat or take anything else during those time, that time, or for most of that time. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning these things, and then He says, أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي Be thankful to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and then He says, and to your parents. Okay? And what I want you to think now, I'm going to give you half a minute. I'm going to give you half a minute. What I want you to do is think about something that you are so thankful for about your parents. Okay? Maybe it's something they did for you recently or maybe a while back. Maybe you're, like when you were four or five years old, it's your oldest memory. Something that they did for you that just sticks. And you just like, you go up to your mom or dad and kiss them right when you think of that or when, anytime you remember that. So I'm going to give you half a minute and then I would like you to share it. Okay? So go ahead. Think about it seriously. Please think about this. 30 seconds. So the happiest memory or the thing that you're most thankful for and you love having them as your parents when you hear about this or you think about this. Okay. Let's see some hands. Yes, sister. She got you a really expensive camera. Okay. Very good. Yes. Okay, mashallah. So they kept him educated in the deen and also academically in secular subjects or other subjects as well. Yes? First time you got your phone, okay? Yes? I was a little, I was a little kid and there was like a set, set of cards that I would play. I wanted it so badly for aid. But we were sponsoring an, an extra orphan at that time. So they said that we might not be able to buy it. But that, but that is, I go there. I open Sisters, up. let's go. A little bit longer. I, sorry. That is, when I wake up, <laughs> I open up the present and I find the car set, the car set over there. Okay, the, the, what you wanted really yes. bad. Um, okay, yes? A uh, driver's permit. A driver's permit. They're like, okay, finally, what's your name? It's Mike. Okay, we're going to give you the, the license to kill people, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive men like maniacs. Okay, yes? Stay on the road. Stay on the road. Okay. You first, and then you. Yes, go ahead. Oh, sometimes I feel that... Uh, my parents don't trust me, but then when I see when I see other parents with my friends, my friends with their parents, I feel like my parents trust me much more than <coughs> my friends' parents trust me. Very good point. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. Yes, go ahead. When they generally ask um, almost every day, how's everything going before I complain or ask? Okay, so before they ask you how you're doing, making sure everything is fine, and so on. Yes, sister, go ahead. They took you overseas, okay? Spent thousands and thousands of dollars to take you overseas. Yes? Always staying calm. Staying calm when you do something stupid, okay? Yes? When they're not actually calm, they stay calm so you stay Okay, good. Right, so I wanted to mention that there was a statistic I was reading. It said that uh, nowadays in America, about 65 to 90 percent, okay, it was a very, very broad study, I guess. They said that parents hit their kids, okay? Parents hit their children. And one of the things I remember, like, I'm Desi, right? So those who know Desis, right, people from Pakistan, India, our parents, they have various methods uh, of dealing with us, okay? One is called a chapal. Anyone know what a chapal is? The shoe or the slipper, okay? And so they have a way of throwing it in an angle that, like, pops you on the head or something like that, okay? And it'll come back in their hands almost, something like that, right? Like, subhanAllah, how did that happen? Okay, but seriously, they do weird things to us. And when sometimes when we look at what other parents get, like, sometimes we're complaining, we're getting the chuckle, we're like, oh, I can't believe this, what's wrong with you? You know, and we're complaining about things. And then when we go to school, and I had a friend, his dad would literally hang him in the garage, okay, <laughs> and beat him. So, like, you start thinking, like, okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I like the chapel now. Yes, go ahead. What is that? No, I don't get the chapel now. After high school, when you look at what other parents get, like sometimes we're complaining, we're getting the chapel, and we're like, oh, I can't believe this, what's wrong with you? You know, and we're complaining about things. And then when we go to school, and I had a friend, 
his dad would literally hang him in the garage, okay, and beat him. So, like, you start thinking, like, okay, alhamdulillah, <laughs> I'd like to chuckle now. Yes, go ahead. What is that? No, I don't get to chuckle, alhamdulillah. After high school, I don't think I ever got to chuckle, okay? Yeah, when I started going to college, I never got to chuckle. And I was the good kid. I'm the eldest, so if you know, like, the eldest kids, usually they're like nerds and they're just, they're not troublemakers, they don't get in trouble too much and stuff like that. Okay, so these are some of the things that really we should be thankful for and, and also to know that we live with them, right? That we can see them every day. And there's a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that, some, that says something to the effect, if you look at your parents with muhabba, you see them with love, it is, you, you get an umrah written for you, okay? It's as if you did umrah. Such a huge reward just by looking in at them with this type of muhabba or love. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he was asked, I'm sorry, he, he, said, he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, how can I get nearer to Jannah? What are some of the good deeds that will bring me nearest to Jannah? And he mentioned three, he said, prayer on its time. He said, the second one was, birrul walidain, being good to your parents. And the third is, jihad fi sabilillah, striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the opposite side, the Prophet sallallahu asked the people, he says, what is, there's, right, there's seven evil or deadly sins, right, no, we fought, right? And then he says, what are the worst of them? And the, he told the, uh, the, the Sahaba there, says that the first one is to do shirk, the second one is to be disobedient to your parents. And he mentioned the third, that a person who gives false testimony or gives sl slanders on, uh, you know, chaste women and different people like that. These are the three worst sins that a person can ever do. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, and this hadith is so popular, it's so famous that I'm sure everyone knows about this one, right? That who, the, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asking him, who deserves our attention the most, okay? Like to do good to them and so on. And who did the Prophet ﷺ mention first? Ummak. Huh? Your mom. Your mama. Okay? Joe mama. So he says, your mom. And then he says, then who? Then he says, your mom. Then who? Then your mom. And then who? Then your father. And so many times we kind of disrespect our moms. Right? So many things we do to our moms and hurt their feelings. There's a story related in Muslim about Juraj. Anyone remember or know of this story or have heard of this before? There's a famous worshiper, his name was Juraj, and he had, you could say, his own temple. And so he would pray in this temple, and one day his mom came, and the hadith actually mentions she was kind of she was looking for him, and she put her hands on her eyebrows like this and looking, and she was calling out for him. And so she kept calling him and I want to talk to you. But he was in his prayer, okay? He was praying at that time. And he kept, he, he started thinking for a minute, should I break my prayer and go to my mom? Or should I just keep praying? And then he just said, well, you know what? I'm worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to just keep praying. And so he continued to pray. Finally, <coughs> when his mom says that may you see the face of a prostitute, a bad woman, okay? And, and she left. And some time later, a lady comes and she says she had uh, basically committed fornication um, and she, she was pregnant and she had a baby. When the people asked who's the father of the baby, she says the one who worships in the temple. Okay, so she blamed who? Who did she blame? What's his name? Juraj. Juraj, okay, I just mentioned that. Okay, just open up. So he mentions that and they all come basically, they're going to kill this guy. Like, how could you do this? You're sitting in there, and then you're, 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 you know, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you do these evil actions? What a hypocrite. And so they, they went to him, and they broke down his temple, and then they said to him that they were about to kill him, and he went to the baby, he put his hand on the baby, on the baby's head, and this baby, of course, can't speak. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said, who is your father from the baby? And the baby said that there's a shepherd, who lives around here, basically that's my father. When they saw the baby speak, what, what, what is that? 
It's a miracle, of course, right? And so they were amazed, and they actually said, you know, they, they asked for forgiveness, and they said, we'll rebuild your temple with gold and silver if you'd like. And he said, no, I just want some clay. You know, basically build it as it was before. Now, I want you to think about that. What was he doing when his parents were, or his mom was calling him? Yeah, praying. praying. He was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we doing? When our mom and dad call us over and over again, okay, playing video games. Like, what, are, what are some of the famous ones nowadays? Huh? I never heard of that. Okay. okay but anyways, some girly game, I don't know, maybe. Okay. But what are some of the games guys play? Yes? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Okay? NBA Live. I, I, actually, I feel so good. I, right before I came, I beat my brother in uh, 2K13. Right? And uh, Alhamdulillah, I feel good because he's really good and I, I, I always like, like, lose to him. But um, I was playing with the Dream Team and he was playing with the Philadelphia 76ers. So it was kind of not fair. But I was making him a shot. But Alhamdulillah, I, I still won at the end. He almost came back. But anyways. So a lot of times we're playing video games. What are the things that we're doing when our parents are calling us? Yes. We're on the computer. We're just surfing the net too. It's not really we're using it time wisely. It's just we're surfing the net. What else? Yes. Friends. Friends. We're talking to friends. We're hanging out with friends. Okay. Maybe the sisters, especially. Like, they're in there. Oh my God. You know. Um, yeah. My mom's calling me and whatever. Right. All these types of different things. Our parents. Well, you know, they're in their rooms. They're locking the doors and stuff like that. Not to offend you guys. Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> But anyways, the, the point is that we do all these different things. And he was praying and when she made dua against him, it came true. Imagine that, Allah, that your parents make a dua against you. What will happen? And especially because we're doing something like what we're doing nowadays. Okay, so we have a little bit of time left. What I want you to do now is I want everyone to close their eyes. Okay? Please work with me. No, no, don't peek. Close your eyes. Just open them up. Okay? I want you to imagine that you're going in an elevator. You're going down an elevator. Okay, or you're in an elevator going down. And all of a sudden, you hear this stop. It just stops all of a sudden. And you shake and you almost fall down. And the lights turn off. Okay, now it's completely dark. You try to pick up the phone, your cell phone, and you realize you're way in the basement somewhere in some building and you have no connection. And you go to the phone on the, in the elevator, you try to pick it up, and there's no dial tone. And so you're kind of sitting there, and, and then you realize that nobody's going to know that you're there. Maybe it's like uh, Thanksgiving weekend or something like that, and now you're going to be there for a few days, and nobody's going to be able to get you up. You're sitting there and wondering what to do. And you think about a hadith. You think about the people who were stuck in that cave. And each of them mentioned a good deed that they did to get out of that situation where that cave or that boulder covered the cave's entrance. And you start thinking, and I want you to think right now, what is a good deed that you've done for your parents, okay, sincerely for them, that inshallah will get you out of this situation? Everyone have that in mind? Some of you guys have your eyes open. Okay, now I want you to use that dua. I want you to actually make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using that as we'll see that and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that good deed that you did for your parents just for them maybe nobody even knows about that and make dua for everyone in this room okay open your eyes what are some things that you thought of yeah, I mean you don't have to share like details, but what are some of the nice things that you've done for your parents? Yes, I, I see like the, okay, go ahead. Okay, your mom couldn't cook and so you cooked for her. Yes. You give your mom a Tim Hortons card that Brother Wasim gave you. Okay, what else? That's so cheap. Anyways, okay. What else? Yes. Okay, so you made uh, food for your siblings and cleaned the house. Yes. Okay, your mom couldn't cook and so you cooked for her. Yes. 
You give your mom a Tim Hortons card that Brother Wasim gave you. Okay. What else? That's so cheap. Anyways, okay. What else? Yes. Okay, so you made uh, food for your siblings and cleaned the house. Yes. MashaAllah. Okay. So taking walks with your parents or your mom so that she's not alone. Very good. Um, when uh, they had work in the yard work, I did a lot of the work. Okay. Doing yard work and different things for them. Right? Things that you don't want to do, but you do that to please your parents and to make them happy with you. Yes? Tech support, okay? That's one of my dad. My dad's uh, well, he used to be a pharmacist, but he has no idea on how to do anything on the computer. So all these different times, you know, how do you put an attachment? How do you open an attachment? How do you do this? How do you do that? And all these different types of details that they ask. It gets annoying. What else? Yes. Yeah. Well, my mom has a very strict rule about ways to around the house, so I just so I wear them anyways, even though you can just please her, even though it's, even though. It's, I feel like it's not, I don't really understand the reason behind it. Okay. And it just to please, to please your mom. And to please your mom. Very good. Last one. Yes. MashaAllah. We're doing Rukia, right? When you recite Quran on them when they're not feeling well, okay? Maybe they're not in a good mood and you recite some Quran for them to make them feel better. And so all of us have different things and these things we should try to increase them in good, good ways or what, or what are some of the things that we do for them. There's a famous saying in Arabic. Right? That right, when someone does something, okay, you it basically what comes around goes around. Or what goes around comes around, something like that. Whatever. Okay, so when you do something, it comes back to you. And there are so, certain stories that one of my teachers taught me that there is, these are two stories that happened in the Middle East, and I'll just mention one of them. Um, there's a man that he, he actually took his father to the middle of the desert and he was going to kill him. Okay, he was going to kill him by hitting him or you know shooting him or whatever. Uh, and the older man said to him, he said to his son, "Could you please take me over there, like basically in a different place, and kill me over there?" And he says, "Why? What's the difference?" He said, "Because I killed my father in that place." And so all these different types of things they will come back to haunt us. Right, the way that we're treating and you know I feel really scared, scared and inshallah, you know I hope Allah subhanahu wa taala doesn't do this. But my kids are here, and I do not want them to be doing what I did to my parents when I was younger, right? And some of the other things, I'm sure that you wouldn't want that as well for your kids. So these are all different things that we should be thinking about, and I'm going to give you some case studies, okay? One for the sisters, and one for the brothers, and then we have posters, and then inshallah we'll be done. Okay, so one case, the first case study, this is for the sisters. And then I'm going to ask you some questions. The questions, so listen carefully, and then for the brothers after. So the first one, you're going out with your friends to a big school event. It could be a game, it could be a dinner, a friend's house, whatever. You've brought some new clothes and jewelry for the event. You spend a lot of time getting dressed and putting on your makeup, and you think you look great. But when you come downstairs, your mom and dad go through the roof. They get extremely upset, and they tell, and they tell you that girls, as Muslims, we shouldn't dress that way. That is not appropriate dress for Muslims. And I'm sure this happened to a lot of us, okay? And they tell you to go back and change or, or do whatever. Now what I want you to do, sisters, is I want you to put yourselves in your parents' shoes, okay? I want you to put yourselves in your parents' shoes, and I'm going to ask you two questions. First of all, what is their worst fear? What, are, what is your worst fear? Now you're thinking through your parents, okay, as your parents. What's the worst fear? What are they thinking? What, what, why are they telling you this? So the same people are putting their hands up, other people. Please. Yes, sister in the back. Yes. What is that? Something bad happening to their what? To their kid. Okay. So something bad happening. Okay. What else? Yes, go ahead. Okay, they won't grow up to be good Muslims. Yes. Okay, they might fall into some type of relationship. Uh, someone might look at them or something like this. Okay, what else? What are some other fears that your parents would have? Think about it. Yes. Is it, uh, hold on one second. So a lot of us, we get, we'll get really upset. And we'll just go off on them. Like, how come? My friends are dressing this way. How, why can't I? And so on. But when we grow older, we realize, you know, they were right. But what are some other things? Yes. 
Okay, someone might like uh, like far along, right? So relationship builds to the point of pregnancy or you know haram relationships in that way. The second question uh, question I want to ask: What's a fair solution to this problem? So they want you to go upstairs and probably put on like a really disgusting looking uh, jilbab with like you know whatever, okay? And uh, cover from head to toe, and you want to wear something totally inappropriate. So what's the solution? Yes. Okay, so something in between. But can you break the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. No, of course not, right? So you cannot you can't just wear in something in between like you know wear a jilbab and no hijab, right? Something like that. So what do you mean by in between? Go ahead. Put more. Okay, so when you go to this party and you assure them that there's no opposite gender there and you know, you, you build that trust of course and you tell them and you're going to wear a certain type of clothing when you get there. Okay, what are some other things? What's another fair solution you could think of? Yes? You raise her hand or you're raising your hand or what's going on? Okay, go ahead. Okay, something relatively uh, re relatively nice, but covers properly. Okay, covering yourself properly. Okay, the second one is this is for the brothers. You have a friend who always gets in trouble. Okay, I had friends like that when I was really young, but then alhamdulillah, they went away. Someone wanted to judge, so anyways. But um, your parents want you to stop hanging out with them. You still like him, and you don't think, uh, you and don't think your parents understand. He asks you to spend a Saturday with him at the mall. Now you have to get your parents' permission to do this. Okay? So you're hanging out with this troublemaker, right? It might be a gangbanger or something like that. He does different things that your parents might know of or whatever, or they just don't get a good vibe from him. And they tell you not to hang out with him. So again, the first thing, what do they fear? Yes? Muhammad? Influence. Your influence, right? Bad influence. He might make you do something wrong. Yes? Being arrested. Being arrested. Okay, I know one kid, okay, he wasn't doing drugs himself, but his friend, he, they were going somewhere, the Muslim guys, they are going out uh, pretty late at night, and his friend had some joints, okay, under his car seat, and then he didn't tell his friend about it. So they're going, they get stopped, pulled over for some routine, you know, whatever thing, a traffic violation, and the cop starts searching the car and he finds these uh, weed, basically, in his car, and so they get, both get arrested. They go to jail and he, I think it was three or four days he spent in jail just because of this. Okay? Even though he didn't do anything because his friend's car had this, he got in trouble as well. What are some other fears that they might have? Yeah? Peer pressure, smoking. Peer pressure, smoking, doing other things, yeah? Getting involved in gang. I know what that means that the person that's on the religion is on the religion of his friends. Very good. Okay? So you're known by the company you keep too, right? So if you're hanging out with these people, don't think that you're all, I'm innocent, I'm not going to do any of those things. But ra rather that you probably will end up doing those things. Yes? He can like turn on you and hurt you. Physically. He might turn on you and hurt you for something. Yes? Try to manipulate your personality. Okay, might try to manip manipulate you. And the last question, what would be a fair solution now? So they, they don't want you to hang out, you really want to go out and hang out with this guy at the mall. Yes? Um, go with a friend that you know would be trustworthy and might Sorry, let me ask him first. Go ahead. Um, go with a friend that might influence him. Like okay. If you two are with uh, each other and you go with him, you might influence him to be better. Okay, maybe you can actually influence him to be better. Maybe you find someone who is a positive influence and you hang out with him and you you try to make uh, give that one to him. That could work. Good. I don't know. Um, bring a friend with one of your better friends to you and kind of out. Over So kind of what he said. Just up and better. Okay? Yes? Uh, you can hang out together like in a good environment like Okay, tell them to go to the masjid or let's go to this event. There's so many people, they change their lives. Like, uh, how many of you guys have heard of Baba Ali? Out in California, he has Oma films. Okay, a lot of you guys. So he, that one, if you listen to the way he changed, one of his friends invited him to a Muslim conference, kind of like this. Okay, actually it was a weekend camp. And he changed his life because of this. He became Muslim. You can hang out together like in a good environment like the masjid. Okay, tell them to go to the masjid or let's go to this event. There's so many people, they change their lives. Like, uh, how many of you guys have heard of Baba Ali? Out in California, he has Oma films. Okay, a lot of you guys. So he, that one, if you listen to the way he changed, one of his friends invited him to a Muslim conference, kind of like this. 
Okay, actually, it was a weekend camp. And he changed his life because of this. He became Muslim and went away from all the things he was doing previously because of uh, this. So bring in your gangbanger friend, right? There's a lecture, it's called Than Thugs in the Masjid. Listen to it. Thugs in the Masjid is by uh, Imam Abdul Malik from uh, New York, I think. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. So bring that friend to a good environment, okay? And some of you guys are like, that's why my friend told me to come here. <laughs> okay, anyways, what are some other things that would be a solution to this? Or you can change the solution or the situation. All right, moving on then. I guess. Okay. We have four posters over here, and I have some sharpies. If someone could open these, brother, could you please open these? And um, I have four posters. I'm going to pass them. I'm going to pass two for the brothers, two for the sisters. What I'd like you to do is there's a question on the top of them. Okay. I'd like you to read it, and I'm going to give you about three minutes to write as many things as possible on that piece of paper. And we'll share it at the end. And then I'll give you some tips on how to build a good relationship with our parents, and we'll wrap up. We'll finish up. So um, he's opening those up, and let me pass these posters up. Here. Uh, just take uh, two pens for each group. Yeah. Cut it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. It's gonna die. Get in a group that does have a poster. I only have two for the brothers, two for the sisters. Just split up over here, take a poster and start filling it up. So sisters, this is not um, group time to talk to your friends. Let's try to seriously get uh, some solutions to the questions that I have. <laughs> Understanding each other's understanding oh, okay. each other's interests. Oh yeah. Uh, I can smell the pizza. pizza in your thing. Smell the shark. Doing uh, doing something they like. Doing something your Whatever friends like. Then. You friend your parents. Can you just take a picture of me? Pictures, hold on. Stop the video. Yeah, let's stop. Guys, please listen up. So we're going to go over these some other time, inshallah, maybe I can put them up and if you're interested in looking at them and see what the other groups did, uh, we can put them up and maybe you'll have some tips uh, that you can use. But I'm going to give you five tips really quickly and inshallah I'll end with this on how we can build a better relationship with our parents. Okay? Maybe five different tips that we can do. Number one, making dua for them. Okay? Making dua for them. Very, very important that of course that they make dua for you but also that you make dua for your parents in your prayers anytime you're making dua for yourself you mention your parents as well okay that's one number two I'd like you to and sister brothers and sisters I'd like you to do at least one of them today okay and this second one I, I, I really hope that you would do this I want you to go to your parents your mom or your dad okay probably Everyone would feel more comfortable doing this to your mom. But kiss her on the forehead, okay? And thank her for the thing you were thinking about before, right? The things that you're really thankful for. Kiss her on the forehead and ask her to make a sincere dua for you. As Musa alayhi salam, he, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's my companion in Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to go to a certain person. He saw a, a lady uh, taking care of her son. And then she, he, she kept making the dua, okay, that may Allah make this son the companion of Musa alayhi in Jannah, or basically his neighbor in Jannah. How many of you guys know, know who Imam Sudais is? 
I've heard of Imam Sudais, world famous, right? The Imam of the Haram. His mom said, and they, later he said, uh, well, they asked, how did you become an Imam of the Haram, especially such an honor and so on? He said that I was a troublemaker when I was younger. And so, rather than my mom cursing me out, she would actually make dua. She said, may Allah, whenever I would do something really bad, she would say, oh Allah, make him the Imam of the Haram. Okay? Oh Allah, make him the Imam of the Haram. And she kept making this dua. And sincerely, from the bottom of her heart. So, ask them to make, uh, your mom and your dad, to make a special dua for you. Another thing, number three. Analyze your current relationship with your parents. What are some of the positive things, what are some of the negative things that right now that are going on with your parents? Maybe you can make a note of them, inshallah, as well. And try to do this for a week, and try to think of ways on how you can improve this relationship. Number four. Interview your parents about something that happened in their life, so you get to know them better. Okay? Like our parents, my dad, he loves to be talking about, when he came from Pakistan, he had $50 in his pocket. Okay? So there's there's certain communicate with them about uh, something that you might be interested in. And the last one, make a coupon book. Okay, make a coupon, a coupon book where you have certain different things like bed and breakfast. Okay, or breakfast, uh, breakfast, breakfast in bed. Or uh, certain different washing the dishes, stuff like that. Make a little booklet and give it to your parents and say that whenever you pull a coupon out and you give it to me, I will be there for you. No matter what I'm doing, I'm going to drop it and I'm going to do this for you. Okay. So these are some tips and so you have more and we'll try to put them up so you can see them inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you guys and bring us all closer to our parents and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And reward us for the time that we've spent here together. Rabbana taqabbat minna inna ka anta samiyun ali wa tuba alina inna ka anta tawabur. Great to talk about the speech. Um, I know it's lunchtime, so there's...